Oh, Santa Claus kept us today for a while. And I would like to apologize. Is this time I'd like to turn the meeting over to Dr. Ellis. So good evening. Good evening. According to policy 2200, we must elect officers for the Nash Board of Education. The first position I will accept nominations for is the board chair. Do I have a nomination? Yes, sir. I would like to nominate Bill Sharp. Like to nominate Franklin Lane. Any more? So at this time, I'll do a roll call and you specify who you want to vote for. I'll go, I got this in order. Link Dutton. Bill Sharp. Chris Bissett. Franklin Lamb. Evelyn Bullock. I'm sorry, Bill Sharp. <clears throat> LaShonda Washington. Bill Sharp. Donna Bachavis. Bill Sharp. Sharonda Thomas Bullock. Bill Sharp. Dean Edwards. Frank. Ricky Jenkins. Franklin Lamb. Uh, Stain. Bill Sharp. I'm gonna follow my team. Bill Sharp. Reginald Silver. Bill Sharp. So that is seven three one abstention, Mr. Sharp. Mr. Sharp, congratulations. You are the board chair. Now you will nominate vice chair. Before we go into that role, let me just extend my appreciation to Mr. Lamb. He has done a phenomenal job over the last two years as far as leading this board and sharing his expertise with us. Mr. Lamb, I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ellis. So the next item on the agenda is the election of a board uh, vice chair. Uh, the floor is now Mr. open for nominate. Mr. Yes. Chair. Yes, ma'am. I nominate LaShonda Washington. <laughs> okay. Anyone else? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Is anyone else? Can I get a motion to close it? So move. <clears throat> move by Mrs. Tavis, second by Mr. Um, Edwards. Any oppositions? <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 So the first one, Mr. Franklin Lamb. Um, all those in favor of Franklin Lashonda Lamb. LaShonda Washington was first. Oh, I'm sorry. LaShonda Washington. All those in favor for LaShonda Washington, would you show by, raise your hand, please? Got one, two. Maybe saying Mr. Silver, Ms. Chavis. Ms. Bullock. E. Bullock. Thomas Bullock. Shonda, I got three there. All right, name them for us. So we have Mr. Silver, Ms. Chavis, Shonda Washington, 
Evelyn Bullock and Miss Bullock, uh, and Sharonda Bullock. Well, you're not in there? Yeah. Okay. Oh, and myself. Six. So you don't need to call the other two. So congratulations, Mr. LaShonda Washington for it. Dr. Dr. Ma'am? Dr. Washington. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me, Dr. Washington. Congratulations for the vice chair. Thank you, everyone. Working with you on that agenda. So the next item on the agenda for today is the accept the um, the minutes. But I would like to make a correction because for at the agenda for the for tonight, I would like to make a correction. Uh, there is an item on the agenda. I think it's going to be items. Nine, section one, the North Carolina retention, uh, record retention, the disposition schedule that has been asked to be removed off the agenda for tonight. Am I not correct on that, Dr. Ellis? Right. So I need I need a motion to accept the amendments to remove this off the agenda and accept the agenda with this moved off. Are we doing the pledge? We're doing a pledge. Do we need to do the pledge and then accept the agenda. Thank you. Thank you. So we got tonight for the um, tonight for our pledge. Miss Christine Powers. The pledge is being led by students from Cooper Elementary School, Jordan Stevens, Bryant Sawyer, Brantley Price, and Dakota Sawyer. If you guys will come up, please. Thank you. Thank you. Good job, man. Good job. Start over there. Good job. So they can come on. Good job. Thank you for coming. Good job. Great Thank job. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Awesome job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. 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 Oh, I, I, I heard it too nice and loud. That's probably a lot. Mm -hmm. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Okay, we should give them a hand. They are really good. So please, please extend our appreciation to the folks up at Cooper for working with those kids. A phenomenal job. Thank you so very much. Thank you. So the next item on the agenda is to adopt the agenda. Like I said earlier, we do have an uh, amendment to the agenda. Uh, section one of the section needs to be modified based on, I think it's section nine version, section nine, uh, number one, we're taking that off. So I need a motion to accept the agenda with that, amend the agenda with that removed. So move, Mr. Chairman. Second. Move by Mr. Duncan, second by Mrs. Chavis. Um, questions or discussions? Hearing none, all those in favor will show a sign by aye. 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 Opposed? So carry. So the next item on the agenda will be recognition, Ms. Dr. Christine Carolina. I just want to say one thing for you. We're losing a great resource, and you have been such a tremendous asset to this district. I thank you for all your hard work and service and leading us and communicating us in various areas. So your work, your labor has not been in vain. It shows and you have been, you will greatly be rewarded and missed. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Definitely a tough decision. Um, so we have got um, several NCPS heroes tonight. So if we could have um, Chair Lamb and Dr. Ellis come forward. 
start. Shut up. I was reading, you see. I do apologize. You need to change the, the name tags. <laughs> It took a while to catch that, actually. <laughs> he didn't even blink, actually. He just um, <laughs> OK, so our first recognition um, is a staff member who was nominated for outperformance and excellence. So um, outperformance and excellence category is contributes to the development or improvement of programs, services, or curriculum, fosters growth, effectiveness, or professional development, contributes to student success by closing achievement gaps and measuring progress using assessments and implementing interventions. Um, this individual leads a team of nine school psychologists. She supervises school psychology interns and represents the district at North Carolina Regional School Psychologists and MTSS coordinator meetings. She also works closely with the exceptional children's teachers to ensure compliance with special education referrals and eligibility processes and requirements. As the district MTSS coordinator, she provides professional development and supports MTSS facilitators, district level and school administrators. She also serves as the district 504 coordinator, working with school counselors, administrators and 504 committees to ensure federal compliance for section 504, including identification, evaluation and implementation. She is dedicated to increasing student success and closing achievement gaps at the school and district level in the implementation of the MTSS framework for total school improvement. Megan Carden, if you could come forward. She is both a... <laughs> She is both a team player and an outstanding leader in our district. She goes above and beyond the call of duty and exemplifies excellence in all of her many assignments. Congratulations, Megan. And so the, the last group, actually, we've got six students who are actually being nominated tonight as a group. Um, they have been recognized for winning the NCPS District Holiday Card Contest. So each school um, has a student, um, a piece of student artwork that is submitted to the district and um, voted on. And these students' artwork was um, selected as winners and were highlighted in the district holiday cards this year. So we have got, Dr. Ellis, I'm going to just hand you the stack that works. Um, Jonathan Dowdy, Englewood Elementary School. And I think we'll call all of you to come up and take a group picture for this one. Um, Mahari Wells from Williford Elementary School. Piera Romero Rubio from Parker Middle School. Emma Regal from Red Oak Middle School. Sophia Barton from Northern Nash High School. And Kayla Wilder from Southern Nash High School. And if we could, I think I saw Wendy Hinson. Is Wendy here? Um, Wendy, if you could come and be in the picture as well. Wendy Hinson um, uh, coordinated um, the contest and oversees our fine arts program. Absolutely. I didn't realize we had art teachers. Come on down. <laughs> so while we're getting ready for the picture, if we could give this group of students and, and teachers a round of applause. Congratulations. And that concludes our recognitions for this evening.
Bill's running fast at least with the agenda. <laughs> I don't give you much of an on ramp. No, you got a name for our sheet. Was it our sheet name? The people's. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can we borrow your plug? I forgot mine. All right. So. Uh, Mr. Farrell, so uh, could you get Mr. Lane? Oh, not Mr. Lane, Mr. Edward's Emma, Emma, mask, please. Did I get him one? Yes, yeah, sir. He don't have one. Yeah. Thank you. So while he's doing that, I'm going to ask that uh, with the next item, we need approval for the uh, minutes. Uh, I need a motion to approve the minutes from last week or last month. So move. Second. It's been moved by Ms. Davis, second by Mr. Silver. Questions, discussions? No questions or discussions. I need a motion to accept the minutes. Yeah, we got a motion. Sir. I'm sorry. All those in favor? Say aye. 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 No opposed. Minutes approved. The next item we have on the agenda is the public input, the record of the public input. So each month, the, as a part of our regular board meeting schedule, the board has a policy where there's, I'm gonna ask that you guys put on your mask out in the audience. Off, could you guys still help us please? Is there a mandate in this building for us? Mm -hmm. so then, it is for us, yeah. For this, for this building. For our building. Am I right, Mr. Farrell? I thought we had that. Brought. That's correct. The Board of Education voted that um, we will wear a mask in all buildings <clears throat> um, as it relates to Nash County Public Schools. So please, if the, if you can't wear a mask, I'm going to to take a moment for you to excuse yourself. So according to board policy, there's a time for input as far as uh, uh, public input. The board is obligated to uh, for you to sign up this for, for the board meeting. One of the things that I could, frankly, normally raise all this, but I've heard day after day or week after week. So I'm gonna highlight the highlights point. There is a policy for you. And so basically the board will not respond to individuals who address the board except for requests for clarification. The points being made in case of emergency information receiving during the presentation will not be acted upon at the time that it was received. It will take a unanimous vote of the board members to present the actions taken at the presentation to consider to be unusual or an emergency nature at the time it's presented. Disruption by any person or persons in public meetings are subject to actions in accordance to GS 143-318-17. If the board does not hold a public meeting during the during the month, the board will not provide time. The board will not provide a time for public comments at any other meetings held during that month, unless a majority of the board votes to allow public comments at the meeting, or unless the purpose of the meeting is a public hearing. So I'm going to ask that we show respect while we're having the public input. No applauding, no cheering. Just uh, I'm going to. So let's just try to do this like we do graduation. So uh, this is, um, I, we do have a list of speakers or people that want to speak tonight. I think it's 11. So the very first one on the list, you have three minutes. Ms. McQueen, you're driving the time section. So at three minutes, the first one is Kathy Hawk. Good evening. Dave. I was going to applaud the board for freedom of choice that I was total support of you and I'm sorry that you were bullied 
into doing something that you don't want to. And that's funny because that's my first uh, topic tonight. Definition of bullying, abuse and mistreatment of someone, domination of others, form of aggression behavior, which intentionally and repeatedly causes injury or discomfort of others. From 1941 to 1945, a state organized genocide of 6 million people happened. It was called the Holocaust. Throughout the 17th and 18th centuries, people were kidnapped from the continent of Africa, forced into slavery as servants. Both of these events in our history are not only despicable, but they were known and organized by people in power. This was done in plain sight of their own government. I feel we can compare this to today's form of slavery, forcing our teachers and children to wear cloth <clears throat> to cover most of their face. But what's worse than that is that you're all okay with it, most of you. I always thought board members were a step above us parents, a little wiser, smarter. You could think for yourselves and use common sense and you cared about the staff and your children. Sadly, some of you are just puppets, puppets of our government. You believe everything that the government tells you if you think there's not an agenda here, you people have a lot to learn. Parents, this is for you. Stop complaining to them. Stop getting angry with them. We have to accept the fact that the only way to change a puppet show is to get new puppets. So when some of these board members' terms are up, you need to run for board member in your district. And it's not hard. Trust me, I did it. And you do not need to be a college grad or super smart. It is quite easy and I'm willing to help anybody. Two of these people's terms end in December of this year, District 8 and 9. The others are not up till 2024. And if you can't run, get out there and vote for the right people. In closing, parents, unfortunately, we have some power hungry board people and it is clear they love the power of forcing all of us to do what they want instead of giving them the choice. They do not have to answer to us but one day they will have to answer to the almighty. God is our mask. And when it's your time and mine, no mask is going to save you. As to the bus drivers who threaten to quit, if you let us choose to wear a mask or not, QVC just had to let go 2000 employees. I'm sure some of them will love your job. Ellie Hawk. <laughs> Could you lower that for her, please? Can I help her with it? <clears throat> yes, but since we're going to be extremely careful. <laughs> Hello, my name is Ellie Hawk, and I go to Inglewood Elementary. We all, we all know that masks are uncomfortable and dirty, yet you make us wear them every day. I'm a child of God, and God is my mask. When he wants me, a mask is not going to save me or you. God is... God is in charge. Please let us choose. Thank you. First of all, I would like to thank all of the board members. Some of them. Uh, thank all of the board members who continue to vote for mask. Uh, unfortunately, we do have parents and people in the community who think that masks are not important. And we're always quoting scriptures or our beliefs about what we, but the Bible clearly tells us to do unto others as we would have them do unto us. And it is not about whether or not it's something that makes us feel comfortable, but yet what should be done. And so as we listen to those who continue to complain about the mask, I don't like the mask. 
I don't feel comfortable in the mask, but if the mask is gonna save lives, then I'm for the mask. It is the same as a person who has a right to drink alcohol, but chooses at that point to go and drive. God may have not been ready for them, but they have clearly made a choice that led to their death. So we don't wanna use what we feel is uh, our own excuses to do what we would like to do. Second, I would also like to express my concern about those bus drivers who have concerns about their own families. I am one of those bus drivers. I have no intentions on quitting. I have put, invested a lot of time in Nash County Public Schools and I have no intention on residing. And the people at QVC should not be used as a point of reference. That is an unfortunate circumstance. And I don't think this is the time nor the place. If anything, we should be praying for those people that they might find employment. Thirdly, the fact that we do have such a, a widespread virus that continues to grow we need to have board members that continue to do what is right and what protect the majority. I wonder sometime how many people who are asking that the mask be removed, how many of them have already been infected with COVID? So since they've already been infected with COVID, then they might not have as much concern about those who haven't. And it may not affect them as much as the 2.5 million people who've already died from COVID. So at this time, I would just encourage the board to continue to not think of yourselves as puppets, but yet in human beings who consider the lives of others. Also, as a bus driver, we do appreciate your efforts to increase and give us raises, but we have waited an extended period of time and we would just like if we were to receive a little bit more. It's not that we're ungrateful. It's not that we don't appreciate the efforts. It's not that we are all poor. It's not that any of us are uneducated because that is not the circumstances, at least for my own. But the fact that the matter is that some of us enjoy what we do, just like those who work in other occupations. But the fact that the matter is we get up early, we try to take care of other people's children while they're in our care. And even as I think about it, when a bus driver leaves a child on the bus, we are automatically terminated. If a UPS person leaves a package on their truck, they are not terminated. And my point about this is, is that if we are transporting the most precious cargo, then why aren't we paid as such? And so that is my issue, that is my concern, and that is what I would like the board to consider. Thank you. Gary Robinson. Gary Robinson. Mary Arrington. Good afternoon. Good evening, rather. You all know me. And I've been before you numerous of times. And as the young man just said, that we are bus drivers. Uh, and also, as the young lady just said, that if we don't want to work, you know, we was going to quit. I did not make that statement. At the last time I said we wasn't gonna continue to be disrespected. And numerous of times we are being disrespected. For one instant at the last meeting, and I'm making this clear, very clear, you all states that if it's any disturbance during the time of the meeting, that person would be escorted out. I was interrupted. That person did not get escorted out. That was no respect there. And I hold that you all against that because you all said it at every meeting that if it's any disruptions, that person would be escorted out. I wasn't respected in that way. And I don't think that we should have to continue coming to you all, asking you all, are either making this statement, we are bus drivers and we carry the most precious cargo. And you all should notice this. You know, you should notice this. I had four bus drivers call me yesterday. They are home. They couldn't even drive because they have COVID. They've been exposed to COVID. I'm almost 
70 years old. And I'm not going to be sitting on no bus with kids that don't want to wear a mask. That's not going to happen. I did not say we was quitting. We don't have to quit. We don't have to quit. We just don't have to drive. And this needs to be known because we're getting tired of it. We're getting tired of it. Every thing that going, we are the last one on the totem pole. The last one, and like my brother just said, hey, you all say one thing, the next thing is another thing. We are tired of it. We are tired of it. And we're going to be here. And we asking you all to hear us. Because if you said it, we are important. Show it. Danielle Reese. Danielle Reese. Good evening. Um, until this morning, I had a completely different speech lined up. However, I've decided to take it in a different direction. Y'all know my stance on masks. I have been here every single month since September. I want to talk about integrity and courage and the ability to stand up for what you believe in, no matter how scared you are or how little of a difference you think your voice makes. I don't know about any of you, but I'm trying not only to be a teacher for my children when it comes to standing up for what they believe in, but also a role model. I want them to see that not only do I speak the words at home, but I have built up the courage to speak it here. I want them to remember that month after month, I stood up for them. I realized in the last two years that I had no right to want or desire a change unless I was willing to work for it. I realized that change is not something that happens automatically. It is not something that happens overnight. It will come eventually. I see so many parents with strong opinions on social media but have let their fear get in the way of creating change. It is so easy these days to have an opinion from behind a screen, but it takes more courage and work to stand up in front of people and say the words. We have no problem encouraging our children to get up on stage or go up to bat. We encourage them to try out for sports and audition for school plays. How do we, not, how do we have the right to encourage our children to do the exact same thing we are fearful of? Why do we expect so much more from our children than we do of ourselves? We tell kids, you can do it, you've got this. You know what they hear us tell ourselves? I can't do it. I could never get up there because I would stutter or I would forget my words. Plus they aren't gonna change their mind anyway, so what's the point? What are we teaching our children to just give up? Ask any parent that if they would take a bullet for their child and I would hope 100% would say yes. Ask them to come to a school board meeting and spend three minutes out of an entire month speaking up for their children and you will be getting a completely different answer. That is how strong fear is. Fear is our greatest weakness. The government and the media know it too. Fear is what they have used against us in times like this. Fear rules everything. It rules over our opinions, our courage, our confidence, and it is ruling over our students and our children. I will not stand up here and act like I do not have fear. I have a legit fear of spiders and clowns but I do not have a fear of death. I do not have a e fear of this illness and I will not fear, let fear get in the way of me living my life. I refuse to take any day for granted. There is only one person that knows the number of days we have on this earth and his will will be done no matter what we wear on our faces, no matter who or what we stay away from and no matter what we inject to our bodies. Let go of fear and give us the option when masking our children. One day you will have to make that choice and one day you will have to vote yes. Caroline Tan. I want to know why has a virus that will continue to mutate and never going, going to go away has become such a politically charged endeavor. If it wasn't politically charged, we would be looking at the states and counties that have removed mask mandates from their children and seeing if wearing a mask makes any difference at all in getting this virus or not. Because if we did, we would find the same results as Florida saw, where there was no statistical differences between the counties 
with school mandates and without school mandates. And they don't even have anything where they are removing children from the classroom from if they test, have any child test positive. COVID has become a glorified flu and we have never masked our children for the flu, now have we? Our children are suffering because of this virus because this virus has become a political statement for the school boards and the teacher unions to make with their mask mandates on us, uh, to us parents, and we are tired of this. We want our children to have their God-given freedom back where we decide if our children have to wear a mask in the classroom or not. There is always going to be a new mutation of this like we have seen with the flu. We need to stop overreacting to this virus and start getting our children's lives back to normal and trust our God-given immune system that it will provide the protection we need to fight it. We as parents need to take a note of all school board members who are voting to keep the mask mandates and we need to campaign and vote against them when they are, come up for re-election. Because frankly, that's what I'm doing. I'm keeping a name of all of you who are here and voting to keep these masks because I will be voting against you and I go to every election. I've been voting since I've been 18 and I will continue to vote. Thank you. Sophia Khan. It's Sophie with an E. Sophie, thank you. You don't really hear from a kid about the mass and how it does more harm than good to us kids. Well, I'm going to tell you how much how much more harm than good it does to us kids. Our faces are covered in are covered in blackheads, zits, and whiteheads. Right where the mass sits. This problem does not only affect us teenagers, it affects it affects the kids that have not hit puberty yet. I am 13 years old and I pulled down my mask to get water once. And my friend said, you hit puberty and you hit puberty hard. And I said, and he would never, he would have never said that if we, uh, we the kids did not have to wear these masks. Moving on to sports. I am one of many kids that love sports, but us kids can't play to the best of our abilities because the masks are in the way. Is sports is something that to me brings us kids closer together for kids around our age. And I should quit if I want to. And here's the thing, I don't want to. Thank you. Chris Wheaton. Good evening. I'm the proud father of four, three of which are still in the Nash County school system. One high schooler, two middle schoolers, all A and B honor roll student athletes. Our kids are hard workers who love school. The children, <clears throat> the children of our school district do not deserve to continue being punished for the fears of a few. They do not deserve to be muzzled and starved of oxygen. The depression and emotional strain caused by the continued masking is heartbreaking. Our kids are being robbed of their smiles. Memories whitewashed by blank stares and emotionless faces. Small children are falling further behind by the day. Older children and young adults are having their maturity stunted by nonsensical isolation, distancing and psychotic practices enforced by extremists, high on power and drunk on poisonous fear Kool-Aid, spewed 24 seven from the evil propaganda machine sometimes referred to as the news. The majority of this board too are drunk on this fear of power caught between being truly afraid for their lives and feeling like they have a moral authority for controlling everyone else's children. Many on this board already have their mind made up and are uninterested in actual science and data. Instead, they rely on the latest fear porn and talking points circulated by the pharmaceutical owned and government run website, regurgitated by those in power who are also not interested in facts and logic. Kids now have a new fear more afraid to forget their masks than they are concerned about forgetting homework or even their cell phones. When dropping our kids off to school, they are bombarded by the mask police before they even get out of the car. It's not good morning or hello, Susie, just where's your mask? 
or you need to get a mask on, usually spouted out by one of their maskless teachers or administrators. One of our principals makes a daily announcement reminding students to cover their face completely just before taking to the halls, checking in on classrooms on his maskless rounds throughout the day. But hey, I get it. He probably just wants to breathe. There's been a lot of talk about a goalpost or some benchmark to re reach. We all know that there won't be a goalpost to speak of, no target number of cases. That is not how control works. Pandemia will be here forever. Many will get in their car, masked up for the ride home, rushing to turn on the idiot box, tune into the latest COVID hysteria brought to you by your favorite fear monger. Today is COVID pandemic day 703, but for the rest of us, it's just Thursday. In closing, I hope I'm wrong about some, the board majority. I hope one of you has the courage to stand up and unmask these kids. I hope one of you has had enough. Just one of you is ready to take the un to unshackle your mask. Maybe one of you are done being enslaved by the fear of COVID. I pray that at least one of you are done listening to the ever-changing science, lies, and ridiculous recommendations brought to you by the self-proclaimed deity of science, St. Fauci. Please vote to unmask our children. Robert Cordell. Good afternoon. Mm -hmm. Chair, the superintendent, and the rest of the school board. My name is Robert Cordell. I live at 3300 Brookview Road, Rocky Mountain, NC. Uh, that's District 9 School Board, District 5 City Hall. Uh, as you well may know, I um, tried on three occasions to become a part of this illustrious group. First, as a write-in candidate, only to learn that uh, write-in candidates don't uh, win elections. And the next two times, I, I was on the ballot but I uh, came up short with the votes, but that does not mean that I don't have a passion for children and I want y'all to be the, uh, one of the best school boards in the whole state of North Carolina. Uh, before I make my presentation, I have two students that I want to introduce you to. Uh, Brandon English, who come forward please, and uh, Peyton Kilbrook, come forward please. These guys I want to introduce you, uh, boy, is that these guys are tough. And they would do anything in the classroom for you. I just want you to know that. When it comes down to fixing staple guns, uh, electric pencil sharpeners, hand pencil sharpeners, uh, screws, nuts, and bolts, I don't even have to call the office uh, or maintenance. I just call these two guys. And they jump on it, and they uh, love to do it. And I just want you to know something that you already know. They have great kids in school. And uh, I want to introduce these two guys to that. So thank you, fellas, for coming. And thank you, parents, for bringing it. OK. Now, since we're on the thank you role, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank you for adopting Kelly services. Uh, as most long-term and short-term substitute teachers know, uh, Kelly when we introduced Kelly, we were kind of apprehensive since uh, Hereford County uh, did not want it after the first year and there's no other uh, school system in this area that had Kelly. But since you all have adopted Kelly, find out that uh, Kelly services will allow you to choose in school that you want to work for. Kelly services allow you to work as long as you want to work. It's not any two or three days and you don't have to work anymore. You can, and that's a, Good advantage. Kelly Services uh, uh, pays on Friday, weekly, which is good. Kelly Services offer medical. They offer also, they offer life insurance. And Kelly Services, in my opinion, one of the most important things that they offer is professional people work. Okay. Thank you very much. Stephanie Taylor. Hello. 
I stand in front of this board for the fifth time for our children. The negative effects of long-term mask wearing in children is evident. Masks are making our children fearful. There's been numerous parents requesting this board to make masks optional, with only a few preferring them to stay mandatory. It seems our reasoning and concerns go unheard. I'm very appreciative of the board members who want to give parents their rights back. The CDC has become a joke. I understand we are all trying to navigate this the best way we can, but I believe a parent knows what is ultimately best for their child, not the CDC or this board. Recently, the CDC stated we no longer must quarantine for 14 or 10 days, now only five. They also stated cloth masks aren't effective. Masks give a false sense of security. If COVID can get through three vaccines, I'm pretty sure it can get through your mask. If parents had the right from the beginning, then children wouldn't be suffering, regressing, and dreading school from the torture caused by a mask. The World Health Organization states on their website, children under the age of six should not be required to wear a mask. This is based on the safety and overall interest of the child. They also state the decision to mask children aged six to 11 should be based on the following factors. The child's ability to safely and appropriately use a mask, which we know most children under 11 do not wear a mask correctly or in a sanitary way. In fact, most adults, adults don't either. Another factor determining whether to mask a child is adult supervision and instructions to the child on how to put on, take off, and safely wear a mask. Educators are busy policing masks all day, taking away from valuable learning time. Another factor is the potential impact of wearing a mask on learning and psychosocial development. The World Health Organization states that the use of masks for children of any age with de developmental disorders, disabilities, or other health conditions should not be mandatory and be assessed on a case-by-case -case basis by the child's parent, guardian, educator, or medical provider. In any case, children of any age with severe cognitive or respiratory impairments with difficulties tolerating a mask should not be required to wear one. My two kindergartners only know school with COVID. They do not have the privilege to see what a normal, typical day is. Eat in a cafeteria, play with friends while seeing their expressions. The rug has been ripped from underneath them. When you were a kid, what do you remember about school? What do you remember about lunch? I remember lunchtime being the best part of my day. My children remember it as the time they can take their mask off and breathe and qu quickly eat before they must put it back on in a classroom setting. How children have been treated during this time in the name of public help makes me sad. Kids need to play, learn in person, and see faces. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Next item on our agenda is the business item. Dr. Carolina. Good evening, Chair Sharp, uh, Vice Chair Lamb, and um, Dr. Ellis. Um, you have in your board materials a donation letter. Um, a, the donation letter um, lists all of the donations to Nash County Public Schools valued at $200 or more in keeping in compliance with policy 8220 gifts and bequests. The total fiscal implication for all donations this month is $10,800. Uh, Nashville Elementary School received, am I on the wrong item? Yes. I am totally on the wrong item. I am sorry. You need Christy Grant up here, actually. There you go. I was on a roll, too. Um, <laughs> Nashville, I'm not going to start over. Um, <laughs> Nashville Elementary School received a donation of $1,000 from Hurt LLC and Create Equity Association. Um, this donation was for school supplies um, to, use, to be used for all students. They also received a donation of $1,140 to be used for STEM initiatives from the STEP Twin Counties um, from STEP. Edwards Middle School received the following donation from Step Quin Twin Counties also. Um, they had a grant in the amount of $1,835 to be used for STEM initiatives. Um, Southern Nash Middle 
Uh, same thing from Step Twin Counties. The grant for Southern was $2,470 to be used for STEM initiatives. And then um, Nash County Public Schools Central Office received a Step Twin Counties donation in the amount of $4,355 to be used for STEM initiatives also. The superintendent recommends approval of all donations as presented. Thank you, ma'am. I need a motion to approve those donations. So moved. Second. It's been properly moved by Mrs. Silva and second by Mrs. Davis. Any questions or discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, would you show a sign of aye? Aye. aye. Any opposed? Ask Karen. So next we go to Christy Grant is going to take over the COVID update from now on. <laughs> Good evening. Um, we come before you tonight to give you our monthly update on COVID, and we're going to run through the COVID metrics and then talk about the updates to Strong Schools Toolkit that um, came about since our last meeting. Okay, thanks. Go ahead. Um, these are the overall metrics in terms of the um, positivity rate and the percent positive. If the most important thing on this slide are the last line for NASH and the last, not, last line for Edgecombe showing the positivity rates. And you can see I've really jumped up from 15.19% to 28.89%. And then in Edgecombe, the positivity rate from 14.15% to 48. This is not, this is not the end of the slide. Um, to 48.2%. Um, it's okay. Um, in the, on the next slide, Tremaine, the um, hospitalization rates, of course, when you see the positivity rates going up like that, we do see an increase in our hospitalization, hospitalization rates across the board. The next slide is our um, vaccination status within our um, percentage within our counties and we are seeing a, a slight increase. It's slowly increasing and more and more people um, are getting vaccinated, um, including our percent of five plus population. On the next one, these are our own Nash County um, cases that we have right now. And this has been a pretty tough week as we've come back from a Christmas break um, and then having, having the, you know, the two weeks, our numbers have drastically jumped up. Of course, when we see the positivity rate go up, we're going to see more cases in the schools. Um, and so we are, as of, this was as of, let's see, I think when I did this, it was like four o'clock today. So there may be a few more added. Um, where we have 156 students who are currently diagnosed with COVID, 46 staff members, and we have um, the total new cases is 202. So we'll go to the next um, this is the quarantine rates that we have. So we currently have 285 staff and students quarantined. We have 251 due to community transmission students, 13 due to in-school transmission, and 21 staff members due to com um, community transmission. So we have drastically jumped up even with our quarantine rates. Um, we have not reported any clusters or classroom closures yet or school closures. So that's a great thing. Now I'm going to ask Nurse Terrell to come up and go through the new guidance. Um, Strong Schools Toolkit was updated December 30th, and they included the CDC's recommendations and updates for isolation and quarantine. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. If I can have the next one. Thank you. Um, so as we know, and as you've all heard, Omicron is now... Um, the variant that is circulating in North Carolina, and it is at least twice as transmissible as the Delta variant. So the changes that we've seen with the toolkit um, for our positive person, the isolation has changed from 10 days to five days. Um, so you return on day six and the person must continue to mask for five days post return. If you have symptoms of COVID and you choose not to test or um, are unable to get an alternate diagnosis, it's a return to school in five days versus 10 days if fever-free for 24 hours. So our exposure guidance, if you are not up to date with all recommended vaccinations for your age um, and you've been in close contact with someone with COVID in which one person was not masked, for our students, it's five days of quarantine of asymptomatic, followed by five days of strict mass use, mask usage. 
and for staff who have completed um, their series and are eligible but have not yet completed their booster, um, a quarantine is not required, um, but they must wear a well-fitting mask at all times when around others for 10 days after exposure. For staff and students who are fully vaccinated, no quarantine is required if they have no symptoms after being in close contact with someone with COVID-19. And quarantine after exposure, if this remains unchanged, both are consistently and appropriately masked, regardless of vaccination status, no exclusion is required from school. I can. Go back to that one in the end for the close contact. Yes, sir. Is that definition still unchanged? That is unchanged. So that's still the 15 minutes and within six feet. Yes, sir. Unmasked. At least one person unmasked, yes. If both are masked, then it does not apply. But if if one person is positive and a student um, is not wearing their mask and they are in meet the definition, then that student will be required to quarantine. So essentially we ain't got that. I'm just going over the guidance, sir. Keep on going. I think that's it. So those are the updates for that um, North Carolina DHHS has made, and I believe the state board actually voted on those updates um, as well for Strong Schools Toolkit. We have, um, we, we are really lucky to have started the on-site COVID test and we're really excited about having that in place. You can go to the next slide. Um, as of this afternoon, we had done uh, 1,477 tests. Um, we have had a huge increase in our, those who are registered for testing and I can almost guarantee you that's, we have a hundred, couple hundred more who have registered. Um, our families are having a hard time. Uh, they were over the break, even finding COVID tests. We have rapid tests now and we have the PCR test. So we, for any staff or any student um, in our district, then we, we are able to do on-site testing right there for them. Um, we also have student parents doing drive-bys in the parking lot, um, coming by and getting tested as well. So our nurses have done a really good job. I believe that um, our percent positive as of this afternoon was 10.61% just with the test that we have, we have completed. Okay, um, and as a part of Senate Bill 654, this is the part where monthly we are required, the board is required to vote on the mask um, coverings. I do want to say, um, we did find, I think Mr. Bissett, you had asked at the last board meeting that we had some type of um, goal, goal post or some type of line. We, I did look in Strong Schools Toolkit does have, as it aligns with the CDC recommendations for lifting masks, um, that if our county is at a high or substantial transmission, everyone should wear a mask indoors and moderate or low transmission, unvaccinated people should wear a mask in public indoor settings. So that was all that I could, could locate in terms of the guidance that they, they give us. So um, this for the 21-22 school year, all public school units shall adopt a policy um, regarding the use of face coverings and vote on that at least once a month on whether the policy, the face covering policy should be modified. So that is the end of this presentation. And um, we, this is an action item that will need to be voted on. So the recommendation of the superintendent? The recommendation of the superintendent is to um, vote that we continue wearing masks at this time due to the um, high percent positivity rate. Okay. So we'll go roll call vote. Yay or nay? Uh, yeah. District one? Mr. Sharp, I think we need a motion. Oh, yeah. uh, I need a motion to accept the superintendent's recommendation. So move. Second. Second. Removed. And second. It's removed by Mrs. Bullock. Second by Mr. Silver. But it, is it the recommendation? Aren't we just voting as a board whether right. we're to maintain right. or to change? Right. I mean, it's I, not yeah. coming as a recommendation from the superintendent. I, we, I don't believe. Yeah. Yeah. We're just maintaining yeah. what we've been doing. Maintaining. So is the motion, as you understand it, Ms. Bullock, is your motion to maintain the current mask policy? Yes, it is. <clears throat> Thank you. Just clarifying. Thank you. Yeah.
So it's been moved by Ms. Bullock, second by Mr. Silver to maintain. Uh, we'll do a roll call vote. District one, Ms. Chavis. Yes, maintain. Mr. Edwards? No. Mr. Lamb? No. Mr. Bizet? No. Bill Sharp, yes. Mr. Dutton? I would vote to make it at the discretion of the parent or guardian. Not commanding. Yes or no? Oh, thank you. Mr. Jenkins? No. Mr. Silver? Yes. Ms. Washington? Yes. Ms. E. Bullock? Yes. Ms. S. Bullock? Yes. So we have a 6 5 to maintain the recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. So the next item on the item on agenda is personnel recommendation, Ms. Sheila Wallace. Good evening, Chairman Sharp, Vice Chair Dr. Washington, President and virtual board members. On behalf of Superintendent Ellis, your approval of the personnel action report is requested. Can I get a motion to approve that, please? I'll make a motion that we approve the recommendation. From our... Second. So moved by Mr. Silver, second by Ms. Washington. Any questions? All those in favor say aye, please. Aye. Any opposed? Section four, personnel recommendation information only. We don't need anything for that. Thank you. Section nine, administrative services and operations committee, which uh, we had during the work session. There was only two items that were on the agenda. Actually, the first one got removed. So we had to add the chill and replace the boilers at uh, Middlesex Elementary School by Shannon Davis, the board. Um, and the se second one was replaced the chill at Cooper. The committee to make a recommendation that we accept the uh, quotes that were submitted to this board by Mr. Uh, Davis. Any questions or discussions? I need a motion to accept that, please. I'll make the motion that we accept the recommendations that were made by the superintendent for the board. Second. Second. And probably moved by Mr. Silver, seconded by Mr. Ms. 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 Davis. <laughs> I'm sorry, question and discussions. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Next one was academic services and accountability, Mr. Lamb. <clears throat> yes, we had a couple of things we had to vote on. 2022-23 traditional calendar calendar and minimum invoice field trip and letters implement implementation plan that was for information only first three need uh, um, motion to approve motion by mr visit second 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 by mr sharp all in favor say aye aye all favor aye. likewise motion carried what? Next one is the policy committee. Um, Mr. Chair, I yield to Mr. Uh, Dutton since I was not at the meeting of the policy committee and did not participate in the discussion. Yes, Mr. Dutton, will you take care of that for us? Uh, yes, yes, ma'am, Miss Bullock. We tried. We tried to represent you well, um, but I know we came up far short. But um, we I'm we sure had it fine. We had three different um, kind of slates of policies. Um, uh, one with a, a slight change that was brought about. Um, two that we would like to waive the sitting period to go ahead and take effect immediately, and then the third just being approved, <laughs> recommended for approval as presented. So. Um, I guess I'll read through these um, and kind of designate, but can we vote for them all at once or should we do it in a succession of vote? You could vote for the whole thing at once if, as long as no one objects to that. If someone asks for it to be divided, then it would be divided. 
<laughs> How's everybody feeling? Feeling frisky. All right. Um, so the first two, it's uh, policy 1510, 4200, 7270, and then policy 6305 are being recommended for approval from committee and waiving the 30-day resting period to go ahead and enact. Uh, the next one that's being pulled out is 4150. Um, there was a piece in this in regards to the length of time a parent would have to contest um, the school's ruling on a transfer. Uh, we currently sit at 10. I guess I think the state recommended a move to five. Our committee is, is asking maybe that we keep it at 10 at this point. Um, and then the rest I'll read out are just being recommended for approval as we're presented. So that'd be 2302. 3225-4312-7320-4120-4350-4316-4400-5022-6320-6340 and rounding it out at 7262. Um, those are the recommendations coming from the policy committee. Any Questions, like concerns? <laughs> you want me to go through them a little bit more? Um, do I have a motion for approval? So moved. Second. Um, a second from, a first from Mr. Bissett, a second from Mr. Sharp. All those in favor, um, please vote by the sign aye. Aye. Uh -huh. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Ms. Bullock. Evelyn Bullock. Yes, sir. I'd just like to say Mr. Duncan did a phenomenal job in representing you today. He asked the right <laughs> question. He represented you well. Thank you, Mr. Dunton. I do appreciate it. Yes, ma'am. The next item on the agenda is item 12, the superintendent's report. So good evening. I hope everyone had a restful, relaxing break. Um, second semester has started. Uh, it started uh, Wednesday. Would like to highlight we had a virtual convocation to kick off the semester for our teachers. This was Tuesday, entitled Refocus, Renew, and Refresh. The guest speaker spoke to our teachers about the impact they have on students every day. And uh, it definitely renewed my focus, on, my focus on what we do, and it's all about kids. So I really appreciate, appreciated that um, convocation. January 11th, we have a discussion at six o'clock about NIDA, Nash Everywhere Digital Academy, about if parents are um, choosing that option next year, we'll have under our family information session, that'll be January 11th at six. Please join us if you're interested in NIDA. And uh, lastly, I'd like to recognize Chris Catalano because she's walking away from me. I wanna thank you for everything you've done for Nash County Public Schools. Um, I know you have another opportunity. You will be surely missed. Um, Hard work and dedication did not go unnoticed. Thank you very much. You. Good luck. Well, I appreciate it. Actually, I was going to sneak back and tell you we missed a policy item. There's another policy final approval item that that was, that, that was with the, the, the not the bullet. Did you hear that? <laughs> I know. I know. I, heard. I had one job. I had one job. Couldn't do it. <laughs> But it wasn't Lynch's fault. Um, but it's it okay. And I, I believe. Those all, those all sat for 30 days. I believe this is 4329 and 7311. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a what? Tell everybody to read. Oh, this is the ones for second. So the, yeah, they've sat for 30 days. And this is the second read. All right. Okay, fine. You want me to read them? Oh, that's, I get through it. That's a, can I do that? Yeah, I mean, these were delivered in December um, for your review for 30 days. They've <laughs> met and just need a, a motion to approve these having sat oh, for 30 days. Mr. Sharp? Second. Second from Mrs. Javis. All those in favor, vote aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you, Dr. Catalano. I really want to hear all <laughs> you want to, you want to read I really all wanted them to read it. <laughs> so, I mean, but why did did we do the one that just had the minimal change? I don't know if I had that. that was, I think you lost it. Okay. All right. I think you did. 
So, Miss Bullock, he did. He he missed. He missed that one just for you. So, bring you that. <laughs> well. <laughs> so, that, so as far as the chairs report, I don't have any this year. Again, I would just like to acknowledge Mr. Lamb for doing a phenomenal job for the last two years. I thank you for the, all that you've done. You have been such a tremendous resource to the superintendent. I doing a chair and super assistant chair. And the superintendent's meeting, all this information brought forth has been valuable. So mm -hmm. thank you for the services well done and representing those folks and all of our people here. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Mr. Ms. Chair. Bull. Yes, Ms. Bull. May I also commend uh, Dr. Catalano for her work, for her work mm -hmm. uh, with the policy committee. She has definitely been an asset to uh, the work of our committee. And I would just like to say on behalf of the committee that we wish her well in her new uh, endeavors. And thank you. And Mr. Michelle, can we also not to, not to forget to welcome to your team, Dr. Shonda Washington. We will have to pass her as vice chair and look for great things from her as well. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Silver. Well noted. Thank you, and Dr. Washington. Thank you for willing to serve. Thank you. I also, I also like to recognize two other folks that have been doing a phenomenal job. I definitely sure because you guys will step forward, please. Mm -hmm. I thank you for Ben Blunt, Ben, and Scott Gardner. You guys appreciate all the hard work you do. You put yourself on the line every day, and sometimes that goes unappreciated. That's being let me know. We appreciate all your work and all your what you do for our, not only for this board, for our community and our area. So thank you so very much. Thank you. So the next items on your schedule for upcoming meetings and important dates. Uh, policy committee meeting Monday, the 31st at five, administrative services, the 31st, uh, student services, also the 31st, academic services, also the 31st. Uh, work session Monday, February the 2nd, 5 o'clock p.m. And the regular board meeting Monday, February, 7th, February the 7th at 6.30. If there's nothing, that will, if nothing else that will hold attention to this board, I need a motion to adjourn. Second. It's been moved by Mr. Silva, second by Mrs. Davis. Questions or discussions? Yeah, no. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Let's go home and thank you.